Thanks a lot. I'm glad we made it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think uh, video still gonna be a big thing in India? Do you really think so? Do we are not gonna uh, saturate. No. So the 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 simple reason is that we are a uh, we're a country that does not read and. because we are a country that does not need either because of capability or because of laziness or because of a combination thereof whatever it is may be we have come to accustom ourselves with watching things hearing is a very different thing because it's such a noisy country that our organ just becomes numb to hearing and we are not very good listeners in general uh-huh. so visually it has to be appealing and that's why the blinking light that's why the disco dancing that's why the uh the the ads have such a high level of drama built into it that's why our news channels which is very normal for us that there's a ticker going here there's a ticker going in the opposite direction there's a ticker going up and down there's a ticker going left right and center then there's a ad playing in there as well and there's a center guy who's talking to seven other guys and it's totally normal for us to have that it's not normal if you were to go out and consume international media there it's a very cookie cutter thing like the way it used to be in the past and i think what's happened is that we uh, we become more and more numb to the fact that uh, we we don't read as much we don't hear as actively as we do and visual appeal is just uh, left us with the most active sense of all the five senses out there um or actually i should say that taste is perhaps the most dominant sense for india yeah. followed by visual eyes sense. and uh, and that's why i don't think it's going to go out if anything it's going to become more and more, more, and more. more yeah more. you see so clear it's trends thing. it's a good thing thank you <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we're recording this yeah um i had um really caught on the idea of resistance and mm-hmm. chasing resistance mm-hmm. that you spoke about today i want to really go deep on that okay. now with the other things themes we can do on sure, sure, right sure. but i'm just brainstorming aloud for a moment yeah. because i want to take one thing with you and go deep i have limited sure. time sure. if i had 3 hours i would go really deep on multiple levels good we have like 22 minutes yeah um is that okay if you yeah, go in yeah, depth totally, or is totally. there anything else that you no, want to talk about fine. because I love, a, that. I love that your yeah. question was also around that so yeah let's dig deep okay lovely um so define resistance for the audience and if you want to do it in hindi feel free sure so uh, resistance in the context of w- what i shared in the event just just happening in general in life is it's going outside of your comfort zone or something that is naturally you and the uh, the happy definition that i use is are you doing something where the chances of your failure are greater than your chances of success and how actively are you doing that and how often are you doing that that for me is a resistance filled life now that's not sadistic in the sense that oh my god i will throw myself in misery and pain just because somebody told me so it is the realization that if you do pursue something meaningful then early on as a newbie mm-hmm. you will find yourself lost it's inevitable it's exactly the same way that any new thing is learned yeah so you have to go through that hump of resistance which is very painful which is torturous which makes you question whether you're doing it the right way or not or why are you even doing it in the first place and it's only once we cross that chasm or that hump do we recognize that things become much simpler mm. but at that point of time my argument is you need another hump and another hump and right. another hump because then what you don't just higher at continuous levels right and and, and that, so that's the key it's only upon reflection people think that a hump is like this mm-hmm. it's like a wave but it's actually not it's not like a wave it's it's a mountainous hump it's a mount it, okay it's a so it's ac- wave you're actually going up with up. every hump uh-uh. and and people see it flat but that's not the case it's actually it's like an inclining slope. hump continuous inclining yes, it's a slope nice and um how do you get through these humps and how do you ide- okay before how do you get how do you identify these humps these opportunities of forced growth mm. these gaps where you like i'll get stressed stretched here and i think that's a personal journey and a personal question the for you the, how do you identify it 
for me it's very very clear it's uh, i believe that i'm an observer of my own life i'm not living my own life i'm just observing my own life mm -hmm. because whenever i think of anything that i do it's already in the past so i'm always observing what's already happened there is no instantaneous moment where my thought is aligned to what's happening in that precise moment and if that is true can you say that in another way i gave this answer and now mm -hmm. i'm thinking whether i gave the right answer or not am i now me or am i a observer of me in the past mm -hmm. and my argument is we're always a observer of ourselves in the past we're never really living the present because if you're truly living the present we're never thinking about the present we're only living mm -hmm. it but the minute you think about the present in that microsecond that present has become the past and you are now just observing what has happened yeah as quickly as it happened but it's still the past or we fretting about the future mm -hmm. which uh, is again a useless exercise in my opinion so if i am indeed and th that's just my definition of when people ask me who are you mm -hmm. i'm not ankur variku I'm an observer of Ankur Variku because the minute that I say this, mm -hmm. I know that I am not being me. I'm reflecting upon something that's happened in the past. So if I'm a observer of my own life, mm -hmm. then I already have an image of who I think I should be. That image could be I should be. x quality y quality z quality whatever the case is um i should be generous i should be hard working i should be ambitious i should be whatever benevolent so on and so forth and these humps now are my ways of getting to that recognizing that i'm not yet there so a uh, punith would be like i should be a uh, Let's pick up an example that we were just discussing before we started shooting. Mm -hmm. I should also be a video podcaster. Yeah, you know, audio ho gaya. So instantly your hump mm. is video podcast. Yeah, that's it. Tomorrow you could be. I should be on X. Mm -hmm. Instantly, if you're not there, and you know you don't even have it in you to get there as yet, the hump becomes that. Mm. So the hump becomes anything that you desire to be as observer of your life. Interesting. It's like a goal post that's constantly moving ahead. It's just constantly moving, moving ahead. ahead. It never ends. Interesting. Now, um, how do you do? You get to calibrate your hump, like it, like goal post, like okay, wait, um, like you did with your YouTube viewers. I know. I still vividly remember the five year first five year graph of mm. yours. Um, it it looks a lot like the humps you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, uh, the The one thing that I've realized is when you when you start going up the hump, that doesn't mean that you have to conquer the hump because it could very well mean that that hump was not something that you wanted to even chase. For example, mm. I remember the twenty-year-old Ankur was constantly desiring to be so ambitious that I would lose track of everything else in life. For mm. example, I remember watching the brilliant movie A Beautiful Mind. and feeling ashamed of the fact that i quit a phd in physics mm. when i could have been that mind completely ignoring the fact that that mind had to sacrifice a lot to be that mind oh yeah the fact that you know, of course that movie he, still haunts me yeah exactly right yeah. Uh, set aside the fact that you no know, he 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 suffered mentally from a condition but even the fact that didn't have a semblance of a family didn't have a semblance of a social life didn't have a semblance of perhaps even friends but uh, unparalleled genius yeah um, and i was like i want to be that genius or i remember watching the social network and feeling like what have i done with my life i've wasted my life like here is this dude who at 26 is building this brilliant platform forget the fact that he's billionaire and mm -hmm. all that stuff and here i am at 30 completely lost of what i want to do in life and i felt ashamed of myself and thus the hump at that point was Mm -hmm. get to that point like make yourself so uncomfortable and chase that dream so vividly 
that you become that version of yourself which doesn't care about the world doesn't care about family doesn't care about anything else just devotes yourself yeah. passionately towards the pursuit of your work and today i'm not that person i'm in fact completely opposite to that person what's the opposite of that person the person the, uh, recognizing that you have enough recognizing that you are happy where you are that you have enough like i think the biggest recognition that i live with every day is that i have enough i don't need to chase anything so there is no there's no chase that i am on i'm i'm just on a wonderful journey where i'm enjoying when you say myself. enough um let me understand um can you define it across the spheres like financially or uh, personally relationship wise sure yeah i have enough money that i don't have to think about money can you name the figure so i can visualize it it's my give me a range if you're not comfortable with no, no, exact no no sure i'll give you the exact number <laughs> thank you so for the honest so tw- 21.7 crores is the number that i need for me to live out everything that i want to do in life okay everything for the future as well right so it's paying for kids education um, going to mars which is certainly on on my plan um living out my living expenses blah 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 so this is money that i need if i did not earn any money yeah. ever again i am at about 10 mhm and i'm okay with that 10 because i know that there is an income stream coming in mm. so i don't have to worry about getting to that 21.7 from a relationship perspective i have a lovely family and i have four really close friends mm-hmm. and i don't need a fifth i certainly don't need a fifth mm-hmm. and i love them for you're as good as jesus man jesus had eight good friends when he was like in his 30s <laughs> or 40s <laughs> I, i i'm telling you i'm living my life i i mean I'm, i'm in control of my time yeah What no does that mean? You mean you get you have a schedule in your hand? I have my schedule okay. on my okay. hand, and I spend majority of my time in a day doing things that I want to do. Okay. As I so get a, you have the power to say no. Absolutely. Okay. One hundred percent. Okay. Got gotcha. you. What's that about? And uh, and I devote my time towards what I believe are meaningful pursuits, whether it's experiences, whether it's learning something, whether it's teaching somebody, things that give me genuine joy. Mm. and i have uh, a zero reasons to complain about it in life zero mm. zero okay so now that we understand the base you have okay now we can continue the conversation so, about discomfort and resistance so it 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 will be the case that you you're on a hump and you recognize that you don't want to be on that and you it's totally okay for you to climb down or come back down and and start over a, a different hump if mm. you will it's totally okay as well to not chase humps absolutely fine yeah it is totally okay to be like Correct. you know what peace out chill out i know uh, i understand those are options available i want to focus on the options you have picked i i yeah. have in 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 my <laughs> the rest mind, of you use your brains to figure out the other options but here i'm focusing on ankur <laughs> my my journey is so the the, the the current hump that i am on right now is how can I build a meaningfully large education company using the least amount of people who are all remotely working and are completely flexible with their time. Mm-hmm. That's a big challenge in front of me because it challenges every notion of what I have stood for all these years. I For the longest time, believed that office is the only way where people thrive. Mm. I, for the longest time, believed that the more people you have, the more healthy discussions there are, the more healthy debates there are, and mm. that's why it prospers. I always believe that if you get really smart minds that cannot replace technology, I always believe that to build a really large company, you need to have insane amount of ambition. and drive and even impatience to some extent mm. and i always believe that the size of a company is a reflection of its success mm. i stand corrected on all these counts at least the initial experiences that i'm having i have a team right now which is fully remote mm-hmm. we meet only once a quarter i have a team now which uh, give me the number so I, people and i sure. can understand 
So we are running a 27 crore business annually. Mm-hmm. The revenue. The revenue. Okay. It's a 100% bootstrapped company. We've mm-hmm. not raised any money. It's completely owned between me and my wife. Mm-hmm. We're profitable from day one, about a 30% profit or so. So we make about seven, eight crores of profit. Mm-hmm. All of this is managed by a full time, for a, for, all of this is managed with a team of 12 people, of which mm-hmm. four are full time. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's brilliant. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's I, like two crore revenue per person. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. So, and I've told the team, I really don't want to ever go beyond 25 people. Mm. Ever. And I do want to build a, a large enough company, not again by size. I want to build a large enough company in terms of number of students that we have reached out yeah. or touched. Classic Khan Academy, right? One Correct. teacher, six lakh students. Exactly. You're, you're chasing that. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And create impact in that journey. Yeah. Um, there are 300 million people in this country who will join the workforce in the next decade. 300 million is what in normal in Indian understanding? 300 crores? No, 300 million is 30 crores. 30 crores, okay. 30 crores. Okay. So the population of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu, okay. Let's say that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Huh. 30 crore Indians will join the workforce mm-hmm. over the next decade, which mm-hmm. is a number that no other country has ever seen in global history, ever. Mm-hmm. So there is no precedence. There's no inspiration that we can rely on. There's no playbook to replicate. This number is going to land up in the workforce, hoping that there are jobs, Mm -hmm. but more importantly, and most likely, ill-prepared for the job. Yeah. Because school and college clearly has not done that job as well as they should have. And my hypothesis is that if you were to create a dent in these 30 crore slash 300 million people. Dent in a good way. Dent in a good way. Uh (laughs) Uh, That would be a meaningful dent in the universe. The other option is, of course, to go niche, which is what a lot of people do. Like, Let me focus on the top percentile of the population, Mm -hmm. drive them up, because that's where 80, 20, Pareto happens and so on. Perfectly fair choice, not something that appeals to me. So my bump right now, is to build an organization as small as possible to cater to these 30 crore people. Okay, we'll um, understand the uh, big vision. Now, now focus on the constraints you've put on yourself. Sure. Um, okay, before that, the beliefs you just listed, are these actual beliefs that you were able to identify? I'm like, I'm going to tackle this? Yeah. Yeah? Because these were the ones that I lived with in Correct. the last decade of my startup entrepreneurial journey. Huh, with Nearby. With Nearby, yeah. with Groupon, and, uh, and recognize they worked, but they needn't be the only truth. Mm. So there's another path you're carving. Okay, let me see if this hypothesis also works. Oh, yeah. yeah it's absolutely. just like an experiment, but yes. in the real world. Exactly. Exactly. Ah, interesting. Challenging myself because it it requires me to be a very different leader and a very different thinker and a very different operator than who I was previously. Because previously it was very easy to step into office, gather everyone and say, hey, this is what we're going to do today and let's decide. But now when everyone's spread remote, and everyone's freelancing and everyone's not necessarily answerable to me. Mm-hmm. I need a very different incentive and motivation mechanism for them to be aligned, deliver and still be of the, the quality that it should be. So this is a very different mentality of like chuso uh, yeah. or mazdoor banao versus correct, correct. leverage. What's what would give me the highest leverage? So to understand, if I understand you correctly, um, you you're trying to see the points of leverage or the levers that could really be place of scale. Sure. Correct? Yeah. Which ones have you identified so far? And how technology. do you tackle them? Technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I didn't know of technology, but I think technology in the last few years has changed so rapidly and my willingness to rely on experts who build as against build it on my own uh, has has increased tremendously. So I come from a school of thought where like, well, so you've gone from build versus buy, like jump ship from build it in house versus completely rely on experts. My software bill is the highest expense item in the company. How much is it? We spend about about five to six lakhs per month on software. Okay. Mm. So five percent of your profit. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Why, why the constraints? Why these constraints? 25 oh, why people, um, 30 crore individuals. 
That I understand. Sure. But 25 as a number, 21.1 crores as 21.1, 21, 21, 21.7. 21, uh, 21, oh wow, wow, that's very interesting. 21.7 crores. How did you arrive at these numbers? 21.7 is, is a simple mathematical calculation. I'm an Excel person, so I, I do these numbers. I, I created a long ass video on this as well on how much money do you actually need to live life, which is surprisingly. Uncle number, Variko style. And, and yeah. this is not a number that most people know of, which is unfortunate because then they keep chasing money all their life, yeah. not knowing when to stop. Uh, and I, as, as Confucius very wisely said, that we all have two lives, and the second one begins when we mm. realize we only have one. Why did you realize that? Just so I can understand you better. This has taken a philosophical turn. I know. I, I think I realized this around 38 years of age, which was about five years back. Is there a moment that you remember? No, there was never a moment. There's never a moment in life. And, and people always look for moments. Oh, is there a phrase? Yeah. That's, that's, that's always like this nice Bollywood kind of <coughs> style yeah, of yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Moment yeah. And then yeah. It's like, Hava, yeah. <laughs> and then you have this realization and, yeah. and all that uh, but it, it's just a gradual re realization certainly in my case mm -hmm. uh, it was just the fact that the, the 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 game that i was playing was something that i thought i would enjoy and i certainly was enjoying but it's not a game that was me in the personality of of things because i was trying to impress the world by mm -hmm. building a venture funded company that had certain valuations and so on knowing very well that i was just Wasting money on things that I, I shouldn't be, and and it was uh, it was not a it was not a happy feeling. I like how reflective you are. I am. Yeah. I am. I'm, I'm constantly, and that that's helped me a lot because one thing that I don't like about our our culture, while there are so many wonderful things to admire, is how we deal with failure. Oh yeah. Because we have these two approaches towards failure. One you of mean which our is, failure, people around us. Uh, everyone, oh, but but this, certainly our failure our for failures. sure. Okay, go on. And our failure has these two points of view. One is do everything to never fail, which is impossible. But we just organize our life around that. Like do whatever you can, but just don't fail. Or two, which is even worse in my opinion, is if you do fail, move on very quickly. Koi baat nahi, koi baat nahi. Hota rata, hota rata hai. Aage bado, aage bado. And you just move on very quickly or you're told to move on very quickly this is very different from fail fast uh, learn faster sort of a yeah, thing yeah, yeah. Well, because this that's is like different. the tech thing uh -huh. like, but this is more like how the society just ignore will treat you like, yeah it's like or cover it up is yes, that what you're saying? not even cover it up it's like it happens like shit happens move on, move on. Achha, achha. just move on but when you are asking people to move on you're asking them to sweep the failure under the carpet and worse Asking them to not reflect upon it, which was the yeah. point that I was trying to get to that reflection for me has been such a revelation because I recognize that everyone fails in the world, mm -hmm. but not everyone succeeds. So there must be something between failure and success that makes success happen. In my opinion, it is reflection. Failure plus reflection equals success. That's yeah. the formula. And if you don't reflect, you're never going to get to success despite all your failures because you won't have learned anything from them. Yeah. So you, you come across as a very structured, methodical, systematic person. Do you have an approach to reflection? I, meditation is certainly one of them. Mm -hmm. I've been meditating. Any specific? For, no, nothing, no specific. I don't even know the terminologies okay. and anything. I just sit with myself for 30 minutes every day listen to the sound of birds, water and wind and just close my eyes, stay still mm. and observe my breath. Beautiful. And when I do that, I get all of these thoughts, which I don't dismiss because that's the point of meditation. I just observe them and in that observation, I realize a lot of things mm -hmm. and that certainly helps. But there is a lot of time that I just think I'm just a very active thinker. Yeah. I don't think my mind ever stops. Yeah, I, I, I could notice that. You're somebody who's very quiet. Um, though you talk a lot on the stage. Yes. And endlessly. And so, oh my yes. God, this man doesn't have a full stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no pauses. This yeah. man. I'm like, Nothing. on. But then, this reminds me so weirdly of Amitabh Bachchan. He's, he's similar. Um, I haven't met him yet, but yeah. I've um, never met him as well. 
And but otherwise you're very quiet, reserved in am. your cocoon. I'm an introvert. Yeah. I'm, I'm an absolute introvert. I I love the stage because I'm speaking to myself and not the audience. Oh, that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah, I'm I'm never speaking to the audience, which is why I don't even stop at somebody's face, which is usually considered to be public speaking one on one. You just stop at people as if you're speaking to them. I'm not speaking to anybody. I'm just speaking to myself. Okay, let's let's dive into public speaking for just a minute or two because that's one of my test topics. Ah. Um how do you look at public speaking? One part is you speaking to yourself. What does it change? It it helps me synthesize my own thinking. I have a I have a loose thought in my head and what public speaking is doing is forcing me to get it into structure. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um back to discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the 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 point upon Reflection is that reflection is truly the best way for you to ch- channelize any failure and any discomfort into success. Mm-hmm. Because we will all face at any point of time and several points of time failure and discomfort. But until we don't stop and pause and reflect upon it, what did it teach us and what did it get out of us, we'll never know what to do next. We'll be making the same mistake again. Mm-hmm. So you use reflection as a tool or meditation as a medium to see if the resistance is enough or not to no i don't no. Okay. i don't measure the resistance okay you don't i when i say reflect upon it mm-hmm. to see what it gave me what it gave you what it's made you as a person sure. how much growth you've had yeah do you catalog these uh, bumps like a scientific experiment or no. like hey this is what it, no no okay okay let's get back to the constraints before i run out of sure. uh before we let you retire before <laughs> let him retire yeah he wants to retire at nine o'clock my uh, god <sighs> i sleep every day between nine and nine thirty oh so we have half an hour no <laughs> kidding you have to call my folks as well i know um Okay, let's get back to the constraints. So I understood the 21, 27.1 21.7. 21.7. He's gross, 70 lakh. I get that. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, the 25 member team. Are there any other constraints you have that you actually uh-huh. consciously, calculatively, uh, critically decided this is the constraint I want to play in? No, people People was a big one. People okay. was a big one. Because I, what, what I realized is that as much as you would want to and you... As much as you want to, you cannot and you should not treat people as a data point on an Excel sheet. Which is what ends up happening if you have more people. Because you have no choice. There is no other way. Give me context at uh, any point in life, which is the maximum of people you were responsible for? I was running nearby, uh, sorry, group on APAC, which was 1,100 people. 1,100 people? Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Nearby... At its peak was about 430. Hmm. And almost all points of time was between 200 to 300. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's crazy. That's how did you um, narrow it down 25? I know you'd have, look, even a nearby or uh, Groupon APAC, you'd actually be just speaking to a dozen or two dozen people only, correct? So I don't see contrast yet. So show me the contrast that you're trying to create. I I think the, the, the contrast was twofold. Number one was being a sole leader as against having co-founders at group one so leader is a single leader single okay, leader, okay. Right? Uh-huh. i'm i'm the i'm the quote unquote okay. ceo my partner in crime is my wife mm. but we we don't have overlapping areas at all she manages mm. the business side i manage almost everything else and our roles are very very clearly split you mean you're the creative side and she's the business side correct okay and you just call creative as everything else. <laughs> People do the other way. They're like, I take as creative and she takes as everything else. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah>. The, uh, <laughs> because for me, it's like production. Eh? Well, I, I don't think, and I certainly don't mean it as an offense. I'm, I'm not a Christopher Nolan who would create masterpieces or magnum offices. I am the one who would create a video every day. Yeah, because your magnum opus is you. No, it's gotten to be me, but... Yeah. Even if it wasn't, my job is to just be, there, there, there are always two modes in life. One is you you go big or you go home. Mm-hmm. And the other one is you just show up every day. And these two have very different work styles. So You mean you coast along, you're like, ha, chal raha hai, chal raha hai, versus... It's process. 
The second one is process. Oh, you okay. show up every day. Okay, okay. It's a process. Right, right. It's like there blue is, collar work. Yeah. You have to report. You have to do things. Correct. Just keep. Okay, exactly, gotcha. Right? gotcha. So I, I, I'm an employee of the brand. I, I'm I say this, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Know, like Classic. You've taken it from Shah Rukh Khan. Yeah, <laughs> and I love that because I, I genuinely admire him for his the, work ethic. Yeah, for the process with business. Like it's, it's never this one. Uh, it's not like the Amar Khan thing. Ki, दो साल के अंदर एक मूवी बनाएंगे और वो मूवी मोस्ट लाइकली हिट हो जाएगी अदरवाइज एवरीथिंग इज गॉन इज लाइक हर छह महीने में एक मूवी बनेगी कम रेन कम सनशाइन कम फ्लड कम ड्राउट हर छह महीने में एक मूवी बनेगी एंड देर वाज व्हाट वाज द लेटेस्ट मूवी दैट ही डिड व्हिच वाज द लास्ट सिंह चंदा नो 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 सॉरी पठान पठान राइट एंड नाउ देयर इज जवान एंड देन डे आफ्टर देयर विल बी सम अदर व्हाटएवर द केसेस एवरी सिक्स मंथ्स देयर इज समथिंग इट्स लाइक अ प्रोडक्शन हाउस इट्स लाइक अ फैक्ट्री I am that factory person. I am that laborer in my own mind. Yeah. And you like keep shipping, keep just shipping, keep shipping, keep shipping, just keep shipping. Keep shipping. Yeah. And uh, and what I needed to evaluate, which I didn't know, is can you keep shipping in a creative field with limited resources, being the sole actor, director, producer in the equation? because that was a big experiment mm. i'm the actor i'm the producer i'm the director i have this chotu army of team all of whom are not co-located they come with their own skill sets can i create a factory out of this mm. and the only way that i could create a factory was to use technology correct either to help them with their work mm. or to manage them in their work mm. and that experiment thankfully has worked then we applied that to the startup that i'm running which is in the education space and that also seems to work and now i'm like i don't want to manage people mm i want to manage the systems that manage people double click on that sure. go deep on that yeah so uh <laughs> oh god i'm the writer yeah so there are so it, it's well to the audience one thing why we are laughing two hypotheses <clears throat> hypothesis one is mm. it's a good cliffhanger to leave you all at Yeah. Nothing great will be achieved without micromanagement. This is my opinion. It's actually my belief. Mm. Nothing great will be achieved without micromanagement. Oh, nothing great. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Say that yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, Say that it's again. Quite contrary, huh? yeah. Nothing great. Everything about you is contrary, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nothing great. That's will another be podcast. Without micromanagement. Nothing great will be achieved without yeah. micromanagement. Micromanagement. The mistake people make and i also did at some point is we end up micromanaging people hmm kaam aage nahi ye kiya ke nahi office na baje aage ke nahi kahan ja rahe ho itni jaldi hmm ye kyun nahi bheja wo kyun nahi kiya we end up micromanaging people yeah it's like policing that's not your micromanaging sure exactly yeah. right yeah. whichever word you use that what i have come to believe and it's worked fascinatingly well is the other form of micromanagement which i'm totally okay with and i would in fact love to do is not to micromanage people but to micromanage systems and processes uh-huh. so i am not going to be for example you met aditya i'm not going to be managing or micromanaging aditya ki kaam hua ki nahi hua ye hua ki nahi i'm going to manage the system that ensures that aditya delivers on his work both by quality and by time So, what's the system in this case? The um, system in this case is a combination of. Uh, this is the deliverables done or not? No, yeah. not, not the result. Are you telling? Just the inputs. Just the, re- just the inputs. Just the deliverables, not the output. Uh, look. Sorry. Simplify it for me and my audience, please. Not, not, <laughs> not what happens because of your work. Only what is your work. So, in and let me explain with the creator thing. in our creative business the outcome is followers or is that what you've decided on no no no, no don't generalize just no give me a personal example so i can understand for for me <coughs> the outcome is reach which is hmm. how many people does our content reach to on a monthly basis that number today is about 41 million 4 hmm. crore theek hai hmm. the input to making that happen is ki instagram pe roz ek reel jayegi 
यूट्यूब पे हर हफ्ते तीन वीडियोस जाएंगे लिंक्ड पे हर रोज दो पोस्ट जाएंगे ट्विटर पे हर रोज तीन पोस्ट जाएंगे एक हफ्ते में एक ट्विटर थ्रेड जाएगा एक न्यूज लेटर हर हफ्ता जाएगा हर रोज एक पॉडकास्ट जाएगा थर्सडे को एक लॉन्गर पॉडकास्ट जाएगा एक्स वाई जी दिस इज फैक्ट्री लाइक टारगेट this is the system we're talking about exactly. are we hitting it or not is exactly. okay so you're you're saying this is so similar but i don't see the fine line in my head it's still like are yaar ye to same hi hai same to same to um saying ye hua ke nahi hua versus saying ye teen posts hue ke nahi hue correct the the micromanagement is where are you on this task that's micromanaging people where are you on this task <laughs> Hmm. micromanaging systems is has the task happened or not which is the is that state. the same because the response would be sir itna hua hai utna baaki hai no because there is an end state you're not asking along the way you're asking at the end of it but the answer the same aayega na of course nahi saying okay if are three posts done or not on uh, let's say twitter and the person uh, would be like sir on it or under working there process no one on ready it. two ready three ready there is no on it that you either do it or you don't do it and if you don't do it you bear the repercussion of that if you do it you bear the benefit of it but there is no on it so you're saying you have a deadline you have a timeline yeah. that the person has to uh, deliver it by yes correct and then you you use that as the yardstick is that correct Yeah, stick to. Um, but what what are you micro? I don't. I still don't understand. So I, and we have, we have crossed the time. Is that okay? If we complete this and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What you do is you you spend your time in designing a system or a process. Okay. And you spend your energy designing that process, as mm-hmm. against managing a person. So this is classic work on the business versus working in the business. Let's say that. Okay. So tell me more. Double click on this so I can get you better. So when we started, which was in March of 2020, as an organized system, I sat down to design the process, and the process had to ensure that we hit these input milestones on every platform. Ki mm. YouTube pe ek hafte mein tige jayega, Instagram pe ek hafte mein tige jayega. then you back calculate to see youtube ka ek video is not ek person ka kaam har ek insaan mein usme kaam karna padta hai so there's me who has to shoot there's somebody has to script somebody has to edit somebody has to audio engineer somebody has to then bring it all together somebody has to create the thumbnail somebody has to then type out the description etc etc so there multiple moving parts so you back calculate to see how those moving parts form the larger picture Mm-hmm. You then assess how much time does it take for each of these moving parts to come together. You mm-hmm. then assess how much time does an individual take in their own capacity to finish their own task for it to be ready to be part of a larger machine. You then assign a time when they get that task and a time by which they are expected to finish the task. Mm-hmm. And then you design a tool that measures the compliance of this process hmm what percentage of it is being delivered on time who is delivering on time not delivering on time how often do they deliver or not deliver and what happens because of that break and this is like the classic mcdonald's but in the content creation okay. space Yeah, Correct. that's a, that's a good. So you're example. sitting with a pad and like, okay, three seconds done, five seconds done, six seconds, but in the Correct. content space. Correct. Okay. So you're managing the flow of. You're managing the process. Process. As against people. Oh, interesting. Because when you're managing people, you become unpredictable. Because a person by definition person is unpredictable. unpredictable. So you don't even know what you're managing. But if you're managing a process, you're abstracted from the person. The role could be played by anybody else, and you couldn't care less. Interesting. You know, this is fascinating. Um, maybe we could have a master class on this the next time. Sure. Um, so I can understand, and my audience can understand. Okay, wait. This is what he's talking about. This doesn't just apply to content creation, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. This is like across the space. Um, 
yeah, I I don't want to ask my final question because I want to get him back again real soon. So until then, go and make some galata. <laughs> Always it. Thank you.